Let's construct a histogram, a frequency polygon, and an ogive all with Google Sheets. Now I've got some data here. This represents college credits, and I also have my grouped frequency distribution as well. Let's do the histogram first. For the histogram, I'm going to go ahead and highlight my raw data, but I know that I want to end up with my class boundaries and my frequencies. I'm just going to click, hold, and drag through my data. And then I'm going to click on insert, and then I want chart. It's going to guess the chart, and it guessed a histogram. If it doesn't guess a histogram, go over here on the right under chart type and scroll down until you find this histogram chart. Now I've got the histogram that Google Sheets gave me next to my grouped frequency distribution. I really want a class width of 62, and I want to use my class boundary starting with 52.5. To get there, I'm going to right click or you can click on the three dots and I want to edit charts. I'm going to click on customize and then expand the histogram menu. This is where we're able to change the bucket size, which in stats we call our class width. My class width is 62. That's the max minus the min divided by the number of classes, and we've rounded that up. I want to change my bucket size here to 62. I can type right over that, and I've got the bucket size now or the class width set at 62. But I also want it to start at the class boundary that matches my chart. To do that, I'm going to go down to my horizontal axis. I'm going to expand that menu, and you'll notice that you've got a minimum value and a maximum value. So my minimum value is going to be that 52.5, that lowest class boundary. And my maximum um, is going to be 300.5, which is my largest class boundary. So 300.5. Okay, so now it's looking really good. I've got the boundaries here that match what I have in my grouped frequency distribution. I just need to make this look a little bit nicer. If I go up to the top here, I want to change my chart, axes, and titles. Now you can also do this by clicking on the different elements in your chart, but I think this is just as easy. I want to change that chart title. And I'm going to change it to instead of histogram of data, I want histogram of college credits. Enter. So it's changed that there on my charts. I'm going to go back up to this drop down menu. Now let's change the horizontal axis. Horizontal axis are my college credits. So I'm going to change this to college credits. Enter. And then finally, I want to add a vertical axis. So back to that drop down menu, I'm going to choose vertical axis title. And I'm going to go ahead and add a title here that simply says frequency. Now from here, there's a lot of other things that you can customize. But we've got if I hit enter there, we've got a really nice looking histogram. Next, we're going to set up a frequency polygon. The frequency polygon uses midpoints as representative values for each of our classes and marks the frequency along with each of the midpoints. Now, to create this, I need a beginning midpoint with a frequency of zero and an ending midpoint with a frequency of zero as well. I went ahead and isolated my midpoints and frequencies, but let's go ahead and introduce the beginning and the end midpoints. I'm going to insert a couple of cells here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert cells and shift those down. And I want this to be a class width below my first midpoint. My class width is 62. So I'm going to type equals and I don't want this automatic formula. And then I'm going to click on the first midpoint minus 62. That gives me a midpoint outside of my data where the initial frequency is zero. I want the same on the end of my data too. So to grab that midpoint outside of my data, I'm going to go equals. I'm going to grab the last midpoint and then add that class width of 62. And I'm going to give this a frequency also of zero. This gives me a nice exhaustive list. Um, let's change some of these boundaries. And we're good to go. To graph the frequency polygon, I'm going to click, hold, and drag through both columns of my data. I am not grabbing the headings. You could, but I'm going to go ahead and just grab the data. And then insert chart. This time I want a line chart, and it's guessed a histogram. That's not what I want. So I'm going to go over here to my chart type. 
I'm going to expand this and I'm going to click on a line chart. So that's starting to look a little bit better, but I don't have the points where I want them. I want them to line up with those midpoints. So you're going to click on this aggregate checkbox. So I click on that aggregate checkbox and you'll notice that I've got the zero here at 21.5 and I have my other midpoints along my axis. Now that I've got my chart set up, I want to go ahead and do some customizing. So I'm going to click on customizing and I am going to, let's go ahead and change the axis and titles. That vertical axis is going to be frequency, but I want the horizontal axis to say um, uh, college credits. So I've got college credits there. And I also want to change the chart title to say frequency polygon of college credits. I also want some points and labels on my data values. To do that, I'm going to double click on my line. Notice that it's highlighted it and it's taken me to the series options. Underneath those series options for point size, I'm going to go ahead and choose seven or you can choose 10. I do want to circle there. You can definitely play around with that. And I also want these labels. I'm going to click on data labels and it's given me the frequencies for each of those midpoints except for the top one. So I need to expand my vertical axis just a little bit. So let's also go to my vertical axis. I'm going to change the maximum value on my vertical axis to be 20 and I'm just going to leave everything else there. And now you're able to see that point there at my midpoint of 145.5 and we've got a great looking frequency polygon. Next is our ogive. The ogive deals with cumulative frequencies and I've isolated the cumulative frequencies here along with my class boundaries. Now I do need to add one additional data value into this data table and that's going to be an initial one. I want to show that we're starting at zero. So I'm going to add two cells above the initial ones. I'm going to insert cells and shift down and I want my class boundaries to start outside of my data. These are accumulating up to and those are going to start at my lowest class boundary which is 52.5. I'm going to type this over or you can go ahead and highlight and copy it over but this has a cumulative frequency of zero. As I read this now up to a value of 114.5 college credits I've got five students and so on. Let's go ahead and create the OJ. It's actually really similar to what we just did. I'm going to highlight my data. I'm clicking, holding, and dragging, and then let's insert our chart. So I do insert and then chart, and it would be great. Oh, and it did guess a line graph, which is really great. Now, again, I want aggregate data. So I look over here on the right hand side and I click on aggregate data. So it's putting a value at each of those upper boundaries that I've got in my um, data table. Um, I also want some dots on here and I want to change some of my titles. So the rest of it is customizing. So let's go ahead and continue to customize this one. I'm going to change my title and actually I'm going to click on it this time to show you that we can change it here. And this one is an ogive of college credits. I'm going to change the class at the bottom. I'm just double clicking on that one. And I want to change this to say college credits. And this one here on the vertical axis, the label's perfect cumulative frequency. The other thing that I'd really like are some dots there for each of our values. To get to the dots, you can go down here to series and the point size, I'm going to change that to seven. And you can also add some data labels as well. And again, I don't have that upper data label. So let's go ahead and change the vertical axis, set a maximum value there. It's going up to 30 right now. Let's go ahead and change that maximum value to 40 so we can see that upper cumulative frequency. I hope this was helpful. You can learn how to do this in Excel as well. Take a look at this video. You've got this. Thanks for watching.